Hi, I'm Tim Robel and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today I'm here to talk to you about solar, primarily the solar that I used on my rig, and some of the transformations that I've done uh, with my truck to do that. So in the beginning, it's super obvious whether you're into vans, cab over campers, motorhomes, um, this is a telltale sign that you have solar on. Um, I have 300 watts of solar up on the, the roof up there and everything, the whole entire system is Renogy solar that I bought it, bought it from. Um, this is a 160 watt panel on the side and there's three 100 watt panels up top. Why I have configured it that way is uh, plain and simple. This panel on this side right here is set up for when I'm primarily par parked in trees and I don't have any sunlight coming through uh, on the top. The 160 is enough sus to sustain the system for uh, at least as long as I stay there. So here's a perfect day to talk about uh, solar and why you should put more solar on than you think you need. So I started off with 300 watts, but I designed this system around 400 watts of solar and a 200 amp hour battery. The battery I chose was the Renogy uh, 200 amp hour gel battery. And it's about 128 to 130 pound battery. And it is pretty, uh, pretty giant. I have to say if I did it again, um, lithium ion was just starting to get popular, but I would do lithium ion. Um, the difference in cost, I think I spent somewhere around $400 for this 200 amp hour battery. And it would have cost me somewhere around 2000 to have 200 amp hours of lithium ion. Um, if I did it all, all again, um, I think I would just go ahead and do 300 amp hours. So $3,000 in lithium ion batteries. I would still do uh, as much solar as I could put on the roof. And let me take you for a little tour and show you what I'm running on this. So the primary draw on my system is the Snowmaster Expedition Series refrigerator. Now it, um, it pulls, I think, 66 watts an hour. Uh, of course, depending on the outside temperature. But it is a great, very efficient uh, freezer, refrigerator, or you can configure it to be the whole thing a freezer or the whole thing a refrigerator or freezer refrigerator. So it's very modular and you can work on your uh, your zones. That's what it looks like inside. So the next draw on my system is I have a Dish Network hopper in a 3000 watt pure sign inverter that uh, converts DC to AC basically to run my dish. Now, once I get up and get the dish uh, settled in, it's a it's an auto track. Um, I go ahead and just leave that on because um, I have more power than I need, so it's never really a problem. The next draw on power would be this 32 inch Jensen HD uh, TV and um, it's DC, so it, it only draws like when I, when I uh, over here we have a little uh, voltage meter. When I turn the TV on, we might see a drop from 13.6 to say 13.5, just like we see the fluctuation between six and seven there a minute ago. Um, if I turned it on right now, we'd probably see it drop to six, uh, 13.5. So it doesn't pull a whole lot of power. And um, other than that, I have my charge station and I have, um, lights led lights that are actually on the system i think uh, they were on green last night yep so it's just one of those cheap uh chinese led strips these are set up to go in the back of a pickup truck here's the remote control for it so you can pick the color of lighting you want let me aim that towards the box and well maybe the battery's done i don't know anyway um that's the only draw I really have on the system. Uh, these little puck lights I put up run off of three uh, AAA batteries. And um, I've just replaced this one because it was left on for like 11 hours. But other than that, um, none of them I've had to replace for the whole year. It had plenty of power. Um, so even on this um, day, you can kind of see the panel here on what I'm taking in. Now this is a very nice 60 amp MPPT controller. It's supposed to be 15 to 20 percent more efficient than the, I think it's like a WRM controller, whatever the regular one was. The only reason I jumped up to this is because the other one was only rated for the 300 watt panels and I needed something more on that. 
So that's one of the things I'll talk to you about. Let's say you got the money for 300 um, watts of solar, and but you think in the end you might want 600. Make sure you spend the, you know, might be another 100 bucks on your controller, but get your controller so you can upgrade and add panels because you might find that you don't have enough power or, you know, you're seeking a little bit more power or you're adding one more thing. For myself, I can charge my iPad, my iPhone, my iWatch, um, another laptop off this charging uh, system during the day. Refrigerator's running, TV's going full time. And uh, even on a cloudy day like this, I have plenty of power. I don't run out of power. Um, I can probably assist off that 200 amp hour battery for probably two days with the load I have on it with zero uh, solar. Uh, like if I had the solar off. I spent five days out at King of the Hammers. Three of those days were very cloudy. One was uh, rainy, cloudy, just terrible conditions. And I never ran out even with the 300 amp hours of, uh, or 300 watts of solar and the 200 amp hour battery. I never run out of power even on those three days. Uh, let's talk about the system and how I designed my system. So you have a solar panel up top and it has a positive and a negative, pretty simple. It comes down off the roof and it connects into the charge controller, uh, positive and negative from the panel. Very simple. First thing you'll want to do is connect your charge controller to your battery, positive and negative. So you'll run from the battery up to the charge controller and it says battery, positive, negative. Then from your, uh, your charge controller, you come down, positive, negative. Now you have solar panels that are charging the battery. Off that battery, I have run to my switch panel and, and that's fused on the back side. And so what I've done with that is I've done a two wire system. So every single component in this truck does not utilize the vehicle's chassis ground. So the lights up here, um, those have a, has a two wire system going to it. The um, refrigerator has two wires going to it. You know, I'm not grounded on the chassis like an automobile is. The alternator does not charge this coach battery. It's only charged by solar. There is no place to uh, plug it in anywhere. Um, I guess if I was in dire need, I could put a battery charger on it and plug that in somewhere. But uh, other than that, um, all of the power requirements are, are fine for what we're doing here. So uh, I, would, uh, I would say, you know, there's pluses and negatives, but I would say I like to stay... Uh, for troubleshooting and for ease of maintenance, I like to stay uh, separate systems. And so if I ever did have to troubleshoot out in the middle of the boondocks, um, I would know what system I'm, um, I'm working with. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for now. Um, very simple, easy system. Don't be afraid of solar, whether you're doing, like I said, a van, a cab over camper, or an RV. Um, you know, you're going to solarize your, uh, like this truck, when it was an overland rig, I had 200 watt panels. Uh, 75 amp hour Optima battery and I was running a charge station and my uh, refrigerator full time and didn't have a problem, uh, ever have a problem with not having enough power. But I uh, kind of wanted to double that with adding the TV and a few other little extras. But uh, other than that, um, solar is very, very simple. I mean, I think you can look, put a system together. Um, you know, 300 watts is, is actually not bad. It just depends on what your consumption is. And uh, if you can just stay simple on that, like at night, a lot of times I'll be watching TV, but I'll have a candle burning and it just gives a nice ambiance and a nice glow inside that I happen to really like. Anyway, questions, comments, please hit me up down below. Um, I'll do the best I can. I'm not an electrical, uh, re electrical engineer, but uh, I do know how to put the, the, put the systems together and I'm happy with what I did. Um, trying to think of what the brand of this uh, this panel is. I bought it off of uh, Amazon and it's set up for boats. Um, a lot of the connectors and everything I did was um, stuff for boats versus RVs. I wanted to go kind of a next step up uh, on that. And so far I haven't had any problems other than these green lights staying on right now. And uh, I'll figure that out as soon as I'm uh, done with this video. Anyway, I'm Tim Rubble. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys here next time.